standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. Just 479 more tons. <sighs> just, just 479. Manas? You know what I just can't figure out? Making all this way so far out into the darkness. Why couldn't we have brought more light? Manas, are you okay? Am I okay? <laughs> Am I okay? I'm mining like a space dwarf. Am I okay? <laughs> I'm a bounty hunter, not a goddamn space dwarf. <laughs> Dun dun da da dun da da dun da da dun 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 Oh seven commanders nuggets and empty triangles Mando Dextra here with chapter eight of my ultimate guide to bounty hunting. In the last chapter I showed you how to unlock Marco Quint while making lots of credits and collecting engineering materials. In this chapter I'll show you the easiest way to unlock Celine Jean for her tasty hull and armor upgrades. These will be important because shields are going to break and having a nice thick hull between you and total destruction will keep you away from the rebuy screen most times. In order to unlock Miss Jean, we'll need the following. Level 3 or 4 access with Todd the Blaster McQuinn, and if you've been following along, you should have gotten this way back in Chapter 4. We'll also need to mine 500 tons of ore and supply Miss Jean with 10 tons of the aptly named Painite, because doing all of this is more than a bit of a pain in the ass. Now, before we go any further, let me say up front, this is not a guide to mining. If you're interested in the best way to build and use a mining ship, you'll need to look elsewhere. What I'm going to show you here is just the best, quickest way to unlock Celine Jean with the least amount of prep, time, and effort. And then, we are never going to mine again if we can avoid it. To get this done, we're going to start with the Python build we used to unlock Marco Quint. Check the description for Coriolis links to all the ships mentioned in the video, and while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Elite Dangerous content. It only takes a moment, but it really helps to keep your old Uncle Manus in cockpit nightlights and antidepressants when he's forced to mine against his will. So, if you've been following this guide, you're smart and awesome, and you'll already have most of this build done. Looking at core internals, you can see that we've upgraded the power plant from a 5A to a 6A because mining takes a bit more power. Otherwise, this section is identical to the Rubigo passenger fit, with the only upgraded modules being Grade 3 Dirty Drag Drives from Felicity Farseer and our double-engineered Class 5A FSD available from any human technology broker. Check the description for links and info. If you haven't been following the guide and you're building from scratch, you can skip the upgraded thrusters and FSD. All we really need for this build are cargo racks, collector and prospector limpet controllers, a refinery, the detailed surface scanner, and some mining lasers. With this build, I was able to mine about 150 tons of painite and platinum per hour. It took about four hours to get Celine Jean unlocked, and I made between 125 and 150 million credits during that time. Currently, Painite and Platinum offer some of the best prices and yields for simple laser mining. I use the miner's tool to figure out the best place to mine and sell my ore. You'll find a link below. Laser mining is pretty easy. 
As you approach the ring system you want to mine, you'll need to chart it with your detailed surface scanner, so be sure to include one in your build. Just one probe will be enough to scan the entire ring system and reveal hotspots. Also, remember to stock limpets. I usually carry about a hundred for this build. We want painite, so we'll pick one of those hotspots and head to its center. When you drop out of Super Cruise, you'll likely be scanned by NPC pirates. This shouldn't be a problem as long as your hold only contains limpets. Once these guys have moved on, they won't be back, so it's time to start mining. First, deploy your cargo scoop, activate night vision if needed, and deploy hard points. I usually have two fire groups set up for mining. One fire group has prospector limpets for button 1 and collector limpets for button 2. The second fire group has mining lasers on button 1 and collector limpets on button 2. To start, just face a likely rock and fire a prospector limpet. Once it launches, target the limpet and follow it into the rock. Once it hits, your targeted prospector limpet will display its findings in the lower left portion of your HUD. We really want rocks with a higher percentage of painite and or platinum since these are the most valuable. I usually don't bother with rocks containing less than 10% of these materials since mining rocks with higher percentages will give you a much better yield for the same amount of time and effort. Once you find a suitable rock, it's time to deploy your collector limpets and start blasting. I find that two mining lasers with full pips to weapons is actually enough to keep my six collector limpets busy. And you'll want to keep those collector limpets busy in order to make 150 tons per hour. Also, if you want to make the most money, you'll need to set up an ignore list in the left side panel so that your collector limpets only collect painite and platinum. After this, it's just a matter of grinding your way through this little chore. As stated previously, it took me about four hours to get it all done. If you've followed the guide this far, congratulations. You deserve a pony and the sex act of your choice. So feel free to help yourself to those things, if appropriate and or possible. In the next chapter, we're finally going to get back to some actual bounty hunting after I show you how to build the almost meta Fertilance. But until then... You will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation. will now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation.